Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung. Today I'm going to be talking about metabolic flexibility, what it is, why we should care about it, why it's important, and how we can really detect it earlier than ever before using a very simple handheld device called the Lumen. Uh, this video is sponsored by Lumen and that allows us to provide a discount code listed below if you'd like to give it a try. And it's coming right up. Metabolic flexibility is the ability to efficiently adapt our metabolism to what's available. So our cells need energy, but that's not what we burn. We burn either glucose, which is also found in the liver as glycogen, or body fat, which is triglycerides. You should be burning fat when at rest or fasting, and you should be burning carbs during high intensity activity after eating or when you need a quick burst of energy. The ability to switch in between one or the other easily is very important because as humans evolved, there's a wide variability of what was available. Our bodies can use either glucose or triglycerides. So how do you know which one it's burning? Well, this can be measured by looking at the RQ or respiratory quotient but that requires a lot of heavy duty equipment and is not easy to measure. Instead, the Lumen device measures the carbon dioxide that comes out of your lungs and gives an estimated of, of this RQ with something called the RER, or the respiratory exchange ratio. But what you need to know is simply that it measures how much carbon dioxide is coming out because when the body is burning carbohydrates, it generates more carbon dioxide than when it's burning fat. So you can detect this in this device. You can also check my previous video, Biohacking Your Metabolism, for more details. During feeding, insulin tends to go up and skeletal muscles, which is one of the major users of this glucose, um, stops producing glucose and starts storing the glucose. The fat cells stop burning fat and start making fat through the process of de novo lipogenesis. The opposite happens during fasting. So as insulin falls and glucagon rising, you now switch towards fatty acid oxidation and you turn on the burning of the sugar as well. As you fast overnight when you're sleeping and presumably not eating, you're going to be transitioning from a state of emptying your glucose stores and moving towards fat metabolism. So this, this switch should be happening on a regular basis. And the Randall cycle is really a description of this reciprocal inhibition between glucose and fatty acid oxidation. That is when you're burning fat, you want to burn less glucose. When you're burning glucose, you want to burn less fat. The reduced insulin signaling is going to inhibit AKT and activate uh, fork head box protein O or FOXO. And those uh, regulate the cellular maintenance pathways. That is things like DNA repair and autophagy and stress resistance. Glucose, you're going to be focused on growth, whereas as you switch over to fat metabolism, you're going to then uh, move towards maintenance and repair. And the, the important thing is that they're not one versus the other. Both are important, but they have to be balanced and they also have to um, go one after the other. So there's a natural cycle. In order to have good health, you have to have metabolic flexibility to go between the glucose and the fat burning stages. So you can measure that through this uh, Lumen device. Lumen has done a number of studies looking at metabolic flexibility in real world users. Compared to before the meal, you can see that the carbon dioxide increased and that's expected because as you're getting uh, food and there's a certain amount of carbohydrates, you're going to move towards burning those carbohydrates. Um, so you're going to see that RER move up and that's expected. And how much the RER goes up depends on two main things. One is how much carbs that meal contains. So are you eating low carb versus high carb? And the Two, the important thing is the body mass index, which correlates to the metabolic health of those people. So if you look at this study and look at the people who are eating a low carb meal in blue, 
Well, the RER goes up only a little bit in the healthy group because they're not eating a lot of carbs, so you're not increasing your carb burning significantly. But look at the uh, obese group. It barely moves at all. That is, means that even as you're taking those carbohydrates in, your body has not shifted to burning those carbs, which is really what it's supposed to do. So what happens to those carbs? Well, it's going to get to the liver, it's going to get turned into liver fat through de novo lipogenesis, and there's a significant difference between the two based not on the meal, but on the underlying state of that person. If you look at the moderate carbohydrate meal, you see the same thing. The healthy group moves up more than the low carb, but not as much as the overweight and even less in the obese group. This study shows the potential of using this lumen to diagnose metabolic inflexibility. That is, once you know that you're inflexible, then you can actually do something about it. And the reason it's important is because you're not using the proper fuels, which gets back to the mitochondrial health, because that's what generates the energy, right? So the mitochondria is like that furnace deciding which fuel it's going to use. Is it going to use glucose or is it going to use fat? But luckily, the mitochondria are pliable and can adapt and you can make them healthier again. And the lumen can make this process a little bit easier. The reason that we have to care about metabolic flexibility is because it can be associated later on with obesity and metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance and then prediabetes and then diabetes. It's a continuum, but it's an earlier marker of the disease. Just as we look at diabetes, we see that there is a high glucose. People can uh, with diabetes don't metabolize carbohydrates properly but you can measure the blood glucose you can diagnose diabetes but you can actually diagnose it earlier by looking at prediabetes for example where the blood glucose has only gone up a little bit but you can actually measure the insulin levels because the insulin levels have gone up very high in order to keep those blood glucose levels normal and this is the state of hyperinsulinemia also known as insulin resistance. And again, that's an earlier stage so that you can do something about it before there's more damage. But now there's an even earlier stage that you can look at it, and this is the state of metabolic inflexibility. You can simply do it at home with a device such as the Lumen. You simply take a breath, breathe into it, and that will give you some um, data points if you track it along. So what Lumen did then was do another study looking at prediabetes to show, hey, is this result going to be useful for people because you can diagnose the, the metabolic inflexibility, you can diagnose the prediabetes, but can you do something about it? Uh, using their app and their device, they were able to provide uh, individualized advice based on the RER and uh, what they did was they measured it every day and then they gave them uh, guidelines and this is an example from the paper that they published and over 12 weeks simply following this device and the advice that was given through the app they averaged a 13 pound weight loss a three percent decrease in body fat and a 0.3 percent reduction in the a1c Lumen can also help you with fasting because remember this flexibility uh, also describes the change between feeding and fasting between when you go feeding which you're mostly glucose towards fasting when you want to get start getting away from glucose and more towards fat burning and what the lumen is going to provide is this biofeedback on this transition between glucose burning and fat burning so for for most of us it should be a good switch However, if you have metabolic inflexibility, as you stop burning glucose, but haven't yet started burning fat, there can exist a little window in the middle where it makes it difficult because you don't have energy from either glucose or fat. Then perhaps what you may need to do is more shorter fast until you build up that metabolic flexibility. 
And you wouldn't know that because you haven't been able to measure it before. But if you're not turning into that fat burning, which you can see with the decrease in RER through the Lumen device, then you can say, okay, maybe I have to keep doing these shorter fasts, keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it until I can get to the longer fast. Just like, for example, you wouldn't start from going uh, from your couch and never having run to doing a marathon because it's too drastic. So same thing with the fasting. Maybe you can't go right away to a 24 or a 36 hour or two day fast because you don't have the flexibility to do that. What you may have to do is build your way up and the device is going to give you good data to know what exactly is happening because there's no universal fasting length that is going to be good for all people. You need to know what's good for yourself and this is information that may be valuable to hack your metabolism, to be able to use fasting more efficiently and also to diagnose metabolic flexibility so you can take control of your health at an earlier stage. So if you want to try the Lumen for yourself, just go to Lumen or go below and you can get a 15% off uh, code. Uh, just click on the link below.